Okay, so now we've got the uh, primer done on here, which uh, I went over with another layer of Van Dyke's Brown Hue, and then afterwards I went over with another layer of Mod Podge, especially to fill in some of the cracks that you can't really see up back here anymore. Um, although you can still see a little bit of it up here, where we put the different uh, slabs of quarter-inch foam together. Um, initially I thought that I would want to make the base of the cloth thicker, but then I went outside and looked at my chicken's talons, which I guess are the best existing reference for raptor claws, and decided against it. Um, so for the first thing we want to do is I'm going to get some more Van Dyke's brown hue. Oh, I made a temporary palette by uh, stringing a piece of duct tape down here, because then when you're done you can just peel it up and no harm, no foul. And believe it or not, despite what my desk looks like, I'm not intentionally trying to cover it up in paint stains. So... Mix up a little Van Dykes and a little... You can use a bone color for this, but I enjoy using gray more than bone. And you just kind of swip it back and forth. to get it on the top layer. This technique is called dry brushing, because you're using a dry brush, I suppose. And basically we're just going to do bands of different um, pigments. So like that one was about half gray and half Van Dyke's brown, so now we'll add... You can add more or less depending on how subtle you want the gradient to be. I'm gonna add about another 25 percent gray to this, and then you just wipe most of the paint off of your brush. And you want a little bit of overlap to go onto where you just were. And remember, the secret is not to push into the, the cracks. You're not trying to make it a solid color. Um, dry brushing will help you get more realistic textures in uh, quickly. Uh, airbrushing is another way to do it, but airbrushing is more for skin textures, I think, than uh, harsh, bony, um, kind of coarse and hard things. Claws, beaks, um, hooves, armor. Although if you're going for that kind of uh, Kamui cosplay, fantasy, vibrantly colored look, airbrushing can look really good on armor. But it's mostly a stylistic choice. I'm just doing pure dark gray. I don't think this is dark gray. <laughs> I think this is platinum gray, but I'm using Apple Barrel Outdoor Gloss Paints for this, just to maintain a little bit of that enamel look. Oh, whew, that was close. Um, paints can come in matte or gloss, uh, depending on what you prefer. Um, matte color just doesn't have a shiny finish, and gloss does. Alright, so now that we've used 100% gray, we'll do like a 50-50 mix of white. And we're just kind of working our way up, kind of like a really drab grayscale rainbow, you know? And if it gets a little too solid, like where it doesn't mesh up, and doesn't gradiate right, don't be afraid to use your fingers as tools to um, kind of keep the gradient smooth, you know? Some of the best tools for special effects are right at the ends of your hands. And you can see as it gets lighter, it's really starting to pick up. 
let me see. It's really starting to pick up some detail there. Now you'll sometimes get areas like this where it's not, it looks like it's not super detailed in that area. Fortunately, there's a remedy for that which comes at the end of this. And then we'll just go straight to white. I think most Halloween props are dry brushed because it's just a quick and easy way to get a detail finish. So you can end up with a little bit of that like Halloween amateur haunted house hour look. And you can see the white is really picking up the fine detail so don't be afraid to push it further down the gradient a little bit if you want. You can use it to pick up some highlights on the back or you could even go down here use a little bit to pick out the the ridges and give them a little bit more oomph Don't be afraid to add a little bit more if you feel like it needs it. Worst case, you can go back and use uh, another darker color and cover it up a little bit and just kind of integrate it into your, into your color scheme. There we go, that's pretty nice so far. Mm, let me see. <laughs> And now, the next most important thing, which of course I forgot to get, well, actually, This is called a gloss, or I'm sorry, not a gloss, but a wash. You can use a little bit of water and mix up. I'm just mixing up some of that Van Dyke's brown with it and see how it gets real fluid. It starts to move like water. Uh, and so we can just paint this in. And what this will do is it'll flow into the crevices and give us an extra layer of detail. Like where that flat patch of white was, this will help to conceal it. And the most important part is to have paper towels on hand, which I might not have, because I didn't think things all the way through. All right, next best thing piece of foam. <laughs> Just wipe, let it dry for a minute and then start wiping it off. And you can tint, since we used white, it started to tint a little bit brown, which can be a really uh, interesting effect uh, for painting teeth. If you want to give them a yellow stain, you could stain them with yellow and brown. And uh, with the way this flows, it'll flow down. So like, especially if you're painting teeth and uh, you have both sets of teeth on the table and they're both facing up, if you wash, it'll give it that weird brown around where it hits the gums. And it's a really nice look. I mean, it's a really gross look, but for monsters, it's really nice. All right. All right. Just feathering the brush to prevent it from clumping up and getting my hands super dirty in the process. All right, so now just to make sure that it has that, I want that glossy kind of bright tip that looks like it's been worn down a lot, so.
There we go. And so, here we have finished raptor claw. And now if you really like, you can go in with a very fine uh, brush and a darker color and you can fill in some of these gaps. Well, not gaps, but some of the detail. For example, like, you could just paint in some of these if you really want your detail to pop. Um, or you could go in and, again, use some of that white, mix it up with some gray maybe, and kind of bring out some of your hard won and hard sculpted detail by just gently dry brushing around what you've got going on there. There's no real rules, it's just whatever feels right. And don't let cat hair get in there. Or maybe that was my hair. I don't know. It was someone's. There we go. It's looking pretty nice. And you could do this in any number of colors. Whatever you want. But this is... How to get a basic claw painted uh, after you've sculpted it out of foam. And I am doing this in reverse, so my next video will be how to sculpt a claw out of foam. <laughs>